Yo, good looks to dreadsock.com for sponsoring this episode of Real Notes. Anyone who has curly or locked hair like me knows how sacred a good hair wrap is. A do-rag, a wave cap, a scarf, a bandana, a bonnet, you name it. Dreadsock goes a step beyond the average with silk-based head wraps that offer full protection and frizz control for curls from 2A to 4C. They're made of a blend of breathable materials to help retain hair's moisture and preserve hairstyles enough to ensure a few less trips to the salon, all held down with an elastic band strong enough to withstand even the most aggressive head trips. Whether you wear one to bed or wear one on the go, Dreadsock will have you looking fresh and full. Socks come in all sizes, from shorties for short hair and beginner twists to extra large for the longer locked folks out there. Look, y'all, I've been growing my locks for nearly two decades and have been a loyal Dreadsock customer for 15 years. So when I tell you these shits work, I'm dead ass. Plus, they're an independent black owned business that's worth the time and energy. So go to dreadsock.com and use promo code CINEMASAI, that's C-I-N-E-M-A-S-A-I, for 10% off your first order. They won't fall off in your sleep, but they will keep you looking fresh. Thanks again to Dreadsock for sponsoring the episode. Now let's keep this shit moving. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is Arkansas rapper, singer, producer, and designer Carrie Foe. We spoke about how to blow up a pipeline, both film versions of The Lion King, Molly Shannon's Superstar, Kill Bill, why she prefers watching TV shows to movies, how living in Arkansas influenced her music taste, reflecting on No Small Talk nearly a decade later, the value of independence, and the creative process behind her latest album, Real Bitches Don't Die. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Um, welcome back to Real Notes. Uh, I don't even know if I should be saying welcome back, because this is a... Uh, this is new. This is a new frontier. Uh, we're recording this live from a studio and not just like the corner in my bedroom. So, um, <laughs> you know, um, live from Pirate Studios in Brooklyn. Um, thank y'all for being here. Um, the weather is really beautiful. It's kind of hot, but um, we're working. We're managing. We're having fun. Um, Dylan Green, Cinema Sci, got a lot of names, do a lot of shit running all over the place and i'm with somebody today who's incredibly 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 special and um i'm delighted to have her in a studio and not just over zoom (laughs) (laughs) um you know uh um you know little rock's finest uh rapper producer singer fashionista lego lego enthusiast um a bunch of um what's a <laughs> a bunch of other shit you know making music for gangster bitches that need forehead kisses yeah. type shit we got we got fucking carrie foe in the studio with us today um carrie thank you so much for being here this really really means the world no thank you thank you for having me no nah, yeah like it's it's uh you know it's been a, um it's been a while since we talked um for the rap portraits thing we did what was that maybe about like a year and a half ago uh yeah that was yeah, it was September of 2021. Yeah, okay. Damn, Shit. damn. Time flies like shit. <laughs> For real, yeah. No, it's, I it's, thought that was last year. Me too. No, damn. Was, yeah. It's literally been a year and a half. Like. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that. Oh, yeah. Damn, how you feeling? Like, just like, just before we even get started, like, how you feeling in general? Just like, about life in the last year and a half? Uh, it, I don't, uh, so, uh, uh, uh. it's cool. I, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying life, um. It's just, it's strange. I feel like, like, I love what, I love, like, what I have going on and the people that I'm around. And then, like, I feel like since, you know, everybody's back outside, I'm trying to adjust to being around people that I don't necessarily want to be around. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really <laughs> weird for me. But, um, but other than that, I'm, I'm cool. I'm happy. Like, I think that I'm making great art and I'm surrounded by family and yeah, I'm good. Oh man, I love to hear that. Yeah, nah, like I'm just, yeah, I'm just really excited about everything you've had going on and just like the prospect of you having a new album, like Real Bitches Don't Die will probably be out by the time this episode drops. Um, It sounds great. It's uh, like, it's like, yeah, like it just sounds great. It's like really, uh, this, re- this really does feel like a summertime album to me in like a, like it, like it's real like sweaty and humid and like a great, like chill relaxed soulful kind of way mm-hmm. you know like that mm-hmm. really that really it really speaks to my heart 
and you know like as you know like as someone who's also kind of like adjusting to being back outside and being around people i don't 100 percent know like it's it's <laughs> this is this it, it, it's like real confidence music for me yeah you know like yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's it's making me feel good so i appreciate you for that like <laughs> no yeah um i just think they're like so it's it's funny because this um this album is definitely i mean if you you know if you're like listening you realize that it's actually like it's it's about living with grief but it's like when you're when you're living with grief like life isn't always like sad and bleak and like you know what i mean like you have those moments where you're like i'm i'm that bitch i'm that nigga i'm this i'm that i'm i'm doing this and then you have that one thing that like kind of sets you off and you're thinking about you know some someone or something that you've lost and so you know it's it's kind of just like the cycle of of what life is it's just like the highs and the lows and so I kind of wanted to um talk about that like with the album but do it in a way that's like not not like burdensome for the listener you know like people will talk about sad shit and then they just do it in the most like I like to I like to like wrap, wrap it up with humor and like you know shit that just feels turnt but right yeah so yeah and just like personality and shit you mm-hmm, know like there's mm-hmm. like there's like there's like so much of you in here mm-hmm. and just like so many different little facets of music and just like it, it just it just like it just really feels like the type of thing that's like greater than the sum of its parts you know where just yeah. like everything comes together like a puzzle piece or like a lego set yeah type exactly, shit like exactly. <laughs> but before we get to all of that um i'm gonna ask you the first question i ask everybody who i have on here what was the last movie or tv show you watched that you had a strong opinion about Oh man, I be having strong opinions. Um, uh, fuck, man, hold on. What have I been watching? See, I hate when people ask me questions like this, and then I gotta sit and think about. <laughs> um. Well, I will say the okay. I'm just gonna go to the last thing that I saw, which was the the last episode of Snowfall. Uh huh. Where. I mean, okay, if you ain't watched it, then you ain't watched it, so whatever. You know, um, but where his mom shoots Teddy. I don't know if you watched them far. I'm not caught up yet, but it's all good. Oh, no, so <laughs> nah, 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 you're well, good. Yeah, like I'm that. like way far, I'm, I'm like way far back, so. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> well, that shit, that shit fucking sent me over, oh my God, I was so mad about that. But I don't know, I'm trying to think of like, what's something that I watched where I was just like, oh, I don't know. I, I. It's gonna come to me by the end of it. I'm, I'm, can we come back to this? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. No, totally. I want to give you. I want to give you like a real. I want to give you a real answer. Right. No, I feel you. Before we move on, uh, just because I've been thinking about it, like the last, the last thing I saw that really, really, that really, really hit me was um, I saw I saw this movie called How to Blow Up a Pipeline. I want to say two or three days ago. Mm. Um, and it's a movie about it's a movie about like eight. It's a movie about like eight college kids who decide to come together and combat the climate crisis by like blowing up a pipeline in West Texas. Like one of them's like a one of them's like a demolitions expert. One of them's like a um, um one of them works with the uh, um like oil divestment companies and like one of them has leukemia because uh they live in they live in the shadow of like a power plant yeah. and like acid rain would hit him in the bay so like she developed leukemia and she's probably going to die oh so like a bunch of them just like meet up on a discord server and are like we should just like go take this shit to the system and just like blow up a pipeline and the whole movie is just them doing that you know <laughs> like and, and 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 they and they do it up like a heist movie too mm-hmm. it's 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 like really tight that's you know like it is it fucking um it's been it's been so long since i've seen a movie that really like a movie that like has a message but is also trying to be like fun and action-packed not feel like it didn't feel super overwrought it really you know like it didn't really feel like any like hollywood bullshit like it felt about it felt about as realistic as a movie like this can feel mm-hmm. and like enough of a enough of a like yo like go take action right now in some way you know like it really felt like urgent and real and it just like it just hit me i don't know like i was uh i'm like surprised i was even able to find it and it, it, like like i feel like i should be on a watch list for watching it like like who approved this man who approved who greenlit this movie <laughs> and, and i just and i just learned it's based off a book um also called how to blow up a pipeline that, and like neither of them are about they don't show you how to make the, the bombs to mm-hmm, do it but mm-hmm. like the book's a manifesto and the movie's like a tr- 
the movie is just kind of like that manifesto being put into action by a bunch of people. So it's not yeah. like a it's not like a line for line re redo of the book. It's just like here's eight people who kind of align with these values that this guy's talking about in this book. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if anybody if anybody could find it, like go watch that. It was I'm it was it. it was it was a lot of fun. Um, also, the first time I seen somebody like dip in a movie in like years. And I just and it just reminded me of how disgusting dip is to me. So that's just like been. Oh, the tomato the tobacco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like my, uh, my great aunt used to do that. Oh man. He spit in the. I'm like oh please. My man in the my man in the movie was like spitting in like a in like a plastic water bottle, just yeah. like brown water. I'm just like oh yeah. son, like oh. just smoke a cigarette, please. <laughs> like <laughs> if you got to do it, just smoke a cigarette or something. Jesus. Um. But yeah. So for you. What was what was the first movie experience you can remember having? It could be at the theater, it could be at your cousin house, like the first thing that comes to mind for you. Mm, I'll probably say like Lion King. Like I feel like there's like, <laughs> like everybody's like first uh like Lion King. I was uh very uh like Matilda was uh -huh. like really special. We it, me and my boyfriend actually watched that the other day. Oh. And we knew like I knew so many of the lines. I I was like I haven't seen this movie in years. Um Harriet the Spy. Oh man. Uh, what a classic. I love Harriet the Spy. Um and then my dad used to just like watch like Tremors and um very he's, he's like a super like sci-fi channel kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Um it's like like a like so a like alien alien and like predator and then alien versus you know so like yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff yeah um star wars i don't know i don't know i don't know i just feel like i was kind of watching whatever everybody else was like watching in my household and my dad's like a like a really like big sci-fi movie guy so that's the kind of stuff that he was into and then i was just watching really child like things but mm -hmm. i would say lion king is probably the first the first thing I remember watching, and we had it on VHS, so I would watch it like every single day. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, Lion King is just so fucking fire. It's a classic. It's, it's, just, it's, like... just, it's just such a good story. Yeah. What's your favorite song? You have a favorite song from Lion King? Um, what's the one where they're in the jungle? Uh, uh, Hakuna Matata. No, no, no. Uh, can you feel? Or can you feel the love tonight? tonight? I love that song. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, so yeah, um I think I think I think mine would either be Can You Feel the Love or um I love Just Can't Wait to Be King personally. Yeah, oh, I just can't wait to be king. oh yeah, that one was good. That was yeah. Good. It it was it was it was kinda sad watching the um the remake they did that was like photorealistic and like all the animals. Mm -hmm. Like it's <laughs> Cause like, cause like they did. I just can't wait to be king. And like half the fun of watching that in the first movie is like how colorful it is, and yeah. it looks like a music video. Yeah. But now it's just like a bunch of planet Earth animals just like singing the song, and yeah. it it just doesn't hit the same. Yeah. Like no. at all. No. No. <laughs> like, yeah. No. I, um. I remember I had like. Did you ever watch like Lion King one and a half? Yeah. I had it on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch this so much too. Um. Yeah. I just feel like. I don't know, man. As a kid, like the Disney movies used to hit so crazy for me. Um, I it's funny because so there's one Disney movie that I feel like I didn't, I like never got into, and I feel like I'm kind of like whack for never getting into it. But I was never into Bambi. <laughs> of all movies, I get it. I was ne I like I never got into it, and I feel like I'm 30 years old and I still have never seen Bambi, like all the way through. Like I see the first scene and I'm like, okay, I'm cool. Cause, cause, cause I, I haven't seen Bambi in years. Like, like Bambi's mom gets killed like yes, early. Okay, yes, okay, in okay. the beginning of the movie, okay, and I'm okay. like, <laughs> no, I'm cool. Like as a kid, I was like, uh, I'm cool. So how did you handle Mufasa when Mufasa died in Lion King? But see, but see, that's like Bambi's mom got shot. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mufasa got trampled. Yeah, and it's just kind of like I don't really feel like we saw him be trampled. You just like assume that like right like you didn't see him like like people weren't stomping on him right um which brings me back to another movie that i saw as a kid have you ever seen superstar i have seen on uh, um, the molly shannon movie yes, yeah where, no i've seen her superstar. parents get fucking like killed in a in a cloggy accident yeah 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 that's another one i remember watching as a kid too i actually love that movie man what a good time molly Molly, Molly Shannon, Molly Shannon had a lot going on at that time too. Mm -hmm. I know she just put a book out that I'm like kind of interested in reading. I saw like an ad for it somewhere. Oh, really? But I know, I know, I know, I know she's been through a lot, and she's she's like an icon. 
I didn't know she had been through a lot. Yeah, I yeah yeah I think I think just like in general, like she yeah. just she's just been in the game forever. Yeah. So I, I I don't really know if she's like been through anything like crazy serious. Maybe she has. I'm sorry yeah. if she has, but um. I mean, if you're gonna write a book, you gotta have something like to tell us. Like yeah. something gotta be like, damn, I didn't even know. I, I didn't even know you went through that. You know, I yeah. don't know. Like, don't ain't that why, why you write books to make you know the memoirs have to be spicy? A yeah, little bit, you know. No, nah, totally. I just don't know anything off top. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm gonna be blown away when I read some of it. But, yeah. but and yeah. And then Will Ferrell was in that. Um, yeah, he was. He wow. was like the popular dude that she was like so pressed about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that movie. Man, good times. I, have, I, I haven't seen that one in a while either. Damn. Yeah, Superstar's good. Yeah, Superstar is real good. Now you got me thinking about Molly Shannon. Um, there's a. How do you feel about Osmosis Jones? You ever see Osmosis Jones? Oh wow, I have. Yeah, I did see it. Like when I was younger, but I cannot, I can't, I couldn't tell you, like, I just remember what Bill Murray was in. Yeah. Like that's all. I, I just know he was a germ. No, or he he's like a, wait, is he a, he's like a white blood cell. He, no, no, no. Um, Chris Rock was the white blood cell. Okay. 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 Bill Murray's the guy whose body he's that in. he was in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just remember it being like live action and animated at the same time. And mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. No, nah, I watched it again recently because it was, it was one of my, yeah, it was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where like, there's a scene where like, uh, the white blood cell osmosis Jones is going to try to bust this like this like this like gang operation like inside a zit on oh, Bill Murray's yeah, that's forehead. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> and then and then they blow it up with a grenade and the zit like explodes and lands on Molly Shannon's lips. <laughs> no, I do remember that. Because then he then he like works he worked at like a was it like was it a zoo? He worked at a zoo. Was it a zoo. That's what it was. Because yeah. cause, cause he and he got sick because he was eating an egg and he dropped it in the monkey cage. Yeah, the monkey he, put it in his mouth. And then he was like, I'm just going to eat it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Okay. Definitely you know, pre-COVID. <laughs> right, right. Because you dropping something, you picking up and eating, you're crazy. Out, out of a monkey's mouth, too? Oh, like, no. like you're crazy. Oh, fuck you. But nah, nah, I, nah, Osmosis Jones is really great. Held up really well, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, There's like a whole scene where uh, or um, Lawrence Fishburne Thrax is like, like they, like they go into his brain and like, they have it so that like brain cells are like watching people's memories like their movies they're in like a movie theater mm -hmm. and there's like a whole back closet where like he where like all of frank's repressed memories are and like he gets stuck and um he's like like he just gets stuck in he, he's like wading through every traumatic memory that bill murray's character's ever been through and he makes it out and he's just like this cat was sick before i even got here like <laughs> right. just on some like slick lawrence fishburne <laughs> shit i love that movie so good <laughs> yeah i have to i have to rewatch that Cause I feel like my homegirl was talking about Osmosis Jones the other day, and I was like, "Damn, I haven't been seeing that one in a long time." Speaking of like Chris Rock, um, one movie that I loved when I was younger was Down to Earth. Wow, that's a deep cut. Oh Shit. my god! When I tell you, mm. so every time I would go to my cousin's house. I we like that was on VHS and we would watch that shit over and over and over. That shit was so it took a wood, y'all. Take a wood, y'all. Yeah, I love that movie. I love that movie. Shit. Damn. I, I like once again, haven't seen it in years, but I know my aunt had a VHS copy. Like like someone in my family had a VHS copy of that movie because I can remember I can see the cover in my head right now. Yeah, you like, I mean you should you should definitely watch that one again. That one that yeah. one's really funny just because it's like it's just such a ridiculous like plot, like yeah. like him being killed and him getting hit by a bus, and then him deciding to come back as like a white rich man, but he's like a black comedian, like poor comedian. So it's like I don't know. That movie is so fucking good to me. I I watched it recently <laughs> again. I was like, yeah, this still hits. Like this is still really good. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's like trading places if one of them died. Yeah, basically. Basically, <laughs> that's so funny. So like so so like growing up as you start to get older and have more life experiences and shit was there a was there a movie that kind of stopped you in your tracks and really touched you like beyond something like beyond just like watching a movie for 90 minutes and being entertained by it like not even necessarily in like a artful way but just like a this is like a movie with a capital M type shit Um I would probably say that movie for me would have been Kill Bill Ooh good choice it was like I remember we had that on bootleg. We didn't even have, we didn't even have the real movie. My brother had got it on bootleg, and I remember nobody was home, 
and because it was like my my parents and my brother my brother's like 10 years older than me so he was like a third parent right. and they you know they they tried to like keep certain things they'd be like oh you can't like they would be watching kings of comedy and i wasn't a, like i had to go to my room type shit so um i remember it being in his like little dvd case and nobody was home and i put it in and i like watched it and i was probably like maybe like 11 at that time and I was just like sitting in front of like the big screen, just watching this movie, and it's like so much blood and gore. But she's just like <laughs> relentless, like she's just like not giving up. She's like, I have to go back and like kill this person. And so that was that was like, I don't know. It just it, and to see like a woman doing it was just like, it just blew my mind. And so um, that's one of those movies where like I don't know. I just feel like I kind of embody the like I have to stick to my guns. I have to like go after the things that like that like. Like even if they try to kill me, I still have to go back and like, like revenge, like get yeah, be, be, nice. be vengeful. Like I'm gonna come back for you, and you're gonna rue the day. Right. <laughs> you, you prefer um you prefer part one or part two? Part one, part one. I I watched part two, and I I mean I've watched both of them like hella times, but to me like, and it's it's crazy because even when she goes and kills Bill, it's like it's. <laughs> It's so anticlimactic. <laughs> it's so anticlimactic. I'm like, you think so? Yeah, uh, for me, for me, because I'm like, I feel like you did. You got out of the hospital. You wiggled your big toe. You yeah. learned how to walk. You like went to Japan. Got this like uh, Hattori Hanzo fucking yeah. sword. Cut up Oranishi and shit. And then you yeah. like fucking find him and you just fucking hit him on his chest a bunch of times and he just dies. <sighs> he just like falls to the ground and just dies. I'm like, all right. In the first movie, you cut off the top of Oren Ishii's head. Yeah. You know, like, there's just all these, like, Vivica Fox, when she fucking, like, you know, catches in the kitchen yeah. and fucking throws it. I'm like, all of that was so action-packed. Yeah, that, like, that whole scene is great, too. Yeah, like, like, all of that. I'm like, you fucking ripped out, uh, what's her name? The, eyeball, right? Yeah, her other eyeball. I'm yeah. like, okay, all these different things, and then you get to him, and then you just hit him in the chest. Oh man, I I I I, I, I mean I feel you, but I love the five point palm exploding heart no, technique. No, 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 like. that shit was fine. I was just like, I don't know. I just think I just think I was just anticipating something a little bit more like I get it graphic, you know, like. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I love I love the whole like the whole story. I think the whole story is fucking fire. Yeah, and the fact that she just like her kid was still alive and like had been there the whole time. So like, I love that. But I don't know the. The action person in me is like, man, you could have like, yeah. you could have sliced them with the sword. You could have like, I don't know. Uh, I get it. Like, but 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 like on one hand, I always want to say like, uh, like I like I want to I want to say Bill didn't deserve all that just because like he's just he's just like the worst and like he didn't yeah. deserve and, and like he didn't deserve like the honorable like. The honorable like flashy death it, yeah. it'd be more deserved just like the boom 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 die you yeah. know type shit yeah. but no no that's that's true but it's also like you know she did i feel like she still had like you know love for him in a way mm-hmm. and it's like and it's also like his their daughter was there so she wasn't yeah. gonna like do all of that but i'm just saying just me and i'm like if my ex-man tried to kill me i'm sorry i'm not <laughs> I'm like taking you out in a very flashy, like yeah. everybody's gonna know. But <laughs> I understood. I understood it. I understood it. I was just like, okay. No, I get it. You know, uh, yeah, it's like especially considering like all the shit we'd seen from um j- j- just from like the whole two movies before that. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like I-, I, I haven't watched them in a while, but at this point in my life, I kind of consider them both to be like one long movie, which is mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. You know, like in in, a, in like a. And you, you you ever you ever see this movie called Grindhouse before? Yeah, oh. yeah. Did you see it in the theater when it came out? Uh no, I think I saw it on like TV, just like on regular TV. Man, quick story. Um, when that shit came out, like for anybody who doesn't know, there's this movie called Grindhouse. It was two movies: one Planet Terror, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and Death Proof by Tarantino. Mm-hmm. Um, they released them both together in the theater, and they split them up with a bunch of fake movie trailers. And it was like a whole three and a half hour experience when you're watching two movies. Um, my dad took me and one of my best friends at the time, or, or, or not at the time, you know, shout out to Spence. He's still one of my best friends. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Damn. No, nah, I fucked up. That's my fault. Um, but no, nah, like well, um, my dad took the two of us to go catch it. And it, it was at like 9 p.m. And it was beautiful, man. Like, mm-hmm. like, 
like it's been a lot of three hour movies out these days like if anybody was to do something where it's like a double feature in like a regular theater i'd do that again like i'm not tr- uh, you know like i'm not tr- i'm not trying to watch bo is afraid for three hours yeah you know like i'm yeah. sorry like i love movies like it's what this whole shit is about but yeah. not that you know yeah. but um uh you know like it kind of like kill bill one and two kind of reminds me of like that grindhouse experience like watching them watching them back to back is honestly the way to go for me yeah definitely like, definitely I, I think the first time so i had a friend who she had never seen kill bill before yeah and i was like oh we, it's a movie night like we're watching both of these back like you have and when she finished it she was like this was amazing oh my god i've never seen anything like that. i'm like yeah i'm like yeah this is this is what you missed out on and but she and so to this day like we'll be talk like we'll catch up we like we'll talk like every month two months whatever and she's like yeah guess what i just finished watching i'm like kill bill i'm like oh god so <laughs> like got you started but yeah i think it's um you know you know a movie that took me <laughs> it took me like three days to watch because here's on. the thing i'm not gonna lie mm mm-hmm. I am like not a movie person. <laughs> I'm a series person. I'm a TV show person. A I'm lot of always, people are. I love TV so much. Um, and so with movies, once it reaches past like the hour 45 mark, mm-hmm. I'm like sleep. Like, like my boyfriend, he loves movies and he's like, yeah, let's watch this movie. And then he'll turn it on like the first like hour. I'm like, he'll look over. He's like, yeah, I turned the movie off because you went to sleep and you need to watch it. (laughs) And so he'll start it over from the beginning the next morning and be like, you need to watch this. And I'm like, okay, that's me. Like now I'm watching it. I have to be attentive. Um, But the Irishman. (laughs) <laughs> it took me three days. I still haven't finished The Irishman. <laughs> it took me three days to watch that movie. It was so long. I was like, yeah. man, this is so good, but I can't. And I would just like close my laptop, and then the next day I'd be like, all right, I have some free time, and I would turn it on. But I loved it. I thought it was great. Didn't didn't they split it up into episodes, or is, is it just one long movie? No, it was one. It was okay. three, it was like three hours. Okay. I could, I could, I, cause like, cause like somebody else told me they watched it and I could have sworn they said that it was like split up into, but if it's not, maybe, no, no, no. I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of that Justice League shit they did on HBO Max where they, oh, where they yeah. split the director's cut into like seven episodes. Yeah. I did all of that at once. Terrible. Never yeah, again. Yeah. But yeah, nah, like I get it. Like, you know, like I liked what I saw of the Irishman. I just, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna come back to this. And I just yeah. never did. Yeah. You know? It's definitely, it's definitely one of those. I don't know it's a it's a slow it's a slow burn, but it it was it was really good. I was like, damn, this is like really good storytelling. Um, another movie that took me a minute to watch was King Richard, <laughs> the Serena, the yeah. Mrs. Serena. That took me like two days to watch because I was like, all right, I'm sleepy. Like, close it and I mm-hmm. open it up and finish it. So I'm I'm that kind of person where I'm like, I cannot sit through. I don't know, my attention span just be. It's kind of shy. Sounds to me like you just be sleep, honestly. I do be, I do be sleep, though. I really do yeah. be sleep. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that... Oh, man. My boyfriend loves, like, Bruce Lee movies, so... Mm-hmm. That's, like, always playing, like, A Fist of Fury, shit like that. Um, I don't know. I just... I wish... I, I want to be a movie... Can you teach me how to be a movie buff? Hmm. Yeah. Can you just give me like a list of movies. Yeah. Please. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah, want to yeah. be. I really want. <laughs> I really want to be able to be like. Yeah, like, have you seen this movie? But I'm more of like, have you seen this TV show? So yeah. Well, what's your favorite TV show? Oh man, do you have time? I have so many shows. <laughs> so right now I'm watching um, Succession. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to watch this this last episode. Um, Succession. I love Barry. Um, I'm watching Abbott. Righteous Gem- St- Gemstones when it was out. When's it coming back? I don't know. I, need I don't it. know. I that need shit it. is so. Oh my god, it's so funny. David yeah. Bright is hilarious. Yeah, um, he's the best. We literally keep the office on like a loop. Like we'll let it play all through all the seasons and then start over again. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? About Snowfall. Yeah. Pretty much like <laughs> everything that's like out right now, and then. I like I I watch a lot of reality TV like Real Housewives with right. Potomac. I think that shit's hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. I got my boyfriend into it, and he's just like he's like she's just like he knows that he knows they're like quotables when they come like the intro. Mm. He knows all of that. Um, what other shows have I been watching? Um, I've been watching Batman Beyond. I rewatched that. Wow. Yeah. 
How's that been? Because I because because I haven't touched Beyond in years. Oh my god, I it's funny because I haven't watched this since I was a kid, and then I rewatched it, and I'm like, oh, this is like the best like version of like cartoon Batman for me. Mm-hmm. Like um, that shit is I don't know. It's just it's just good, and it's like it's like the good it's like a good perspective of him like being in high school, which I think is like really cool, and then him having to like find the time between being in school and like being a child to like go and do like uh bruce's like <laughs> work for him yeah yeah um yeah. so i really love that uh what else have i been watching um i don't know okay i'm done <laughs> i um i i'm i'm like i guess so busy that i don't always have time to watch all the shit i want to watch but the stuff that I keep coming back to, obviously, Abbott. I'm, um, I think I'm like two episodes behind on Abbott. Mm-hmm. Haven't started Succession yet. I'm waiting for it to end at this point, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I feel like it's about to be over. Yeah, so. in, in, in like a couple episodes. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I just know everybody I know has been going crazy oh my about God, it. Succession is so. <laughs> also, just knowing like the behind the scenes shit is yeah. makes it funnier. Um, just because like Jeremy Strong, the guy that plays Kendall, mm-hmm. like he does this, me- he, he like talks about his method acting. I don't know if you've heard of it. He like basically is like, <laughs> he's basically like, um, he completely alienates himself from the rest of the cast to like make yeah. them not fuck with him. So when, so like what you're seeing on camera is them really not fucking with him. Kinda. Right. <laughs> um, and like the dad, like really, like actually does, he thinks that the method acting is stupid. He says in interviews all the time. Yeah, yeah, And so yeah. I'm like, damn, that's actually kind of genius that you like are so in it that you're like, all right, I'm going to make them not like me. So it reads on the camera. And I think that's, that's what makes the show like so cool is that it's like, it's it's kind of not acting. A lot of that shit feels <laughs> improvised too, like the right. stuff that they say. So I love stuff like that too. And like Brian Cox, who plays the dad, is one mm-hmm. of my favorite actors. So like seeing him, seeing him just in like full like dickhead mode, yeah. it always, always just yeah. makes me happy. I was saying <laughs> that uh, there should be like a drinking game, a succession drinking game for it. You should take like a, a sip of a drink or a shot. I mean, I feel like if you take shots, you'll be dead. But um, <laughs> you should take a sip of your drink every time somebody says "fuck off." Yeah, <laughs> because like because people say fuck off like every three words and it's just like everybody would be fucking drunk as hell right on the floor. So <laughs> damn, yeah, no, nah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna start it as soon as it's over at this point because I know this is the last season. Yeah, um, and I, snowfall's about to be over. Is is, is 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 it snowfall over? I think it's I think this is the the one that uh, comes out tonight is a uh, last episode. Oh, okay, of the season. Okay, I okay, say. okay, so. And yeah, yeah, I gotta catch up on that too. Yeah. Um, I watch a lot of Simpsons. Like that's like that's like my comfort show. Like yeah. I like 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 I've seen every episode from like season seven to like fourteen, mm-hmm. like fifty million times. Like I could just throw that on and just like know where I'm at. What's funny is I know? was I like was obsessed with the Simpsons, but I hadn't watched I hadn't watched a lot of it. Like it would be on when I came home from school, and but for whatever reason I had this phase where I was just like very obsessed with like the simpsons like paraphernalia Mm -hmm. so i had like homer house shoes uh there was like this i don't know if you saw this like it was like a game it was like a taxi game but it was like oh simpsons road rage yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. like i had that game like i I was was very obsessed with that but i feel like i haven't watched enough like of the simpsons you want to know what i be what i what i used to watch and what i've kind of like started watching again is very problematic what's that south park (laughs) how's that been because like Cause like I fell off like years ago, but like I've been like I've been seeing people go back and like rewatch some of the old shit, and like I've been thinking about a few things. Like how how's it been so far? Um, I don't think that I would watch the newer episodes. I'm mm-hmm. just like going back to the very beginning, but that shit is like that shit's so problematic. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that shit as a kid, and like when I would go to my grandma's house, we would like me and my cousins we would watch it because my grandma wasn't really supervising us like that. Right. And so we would just be laughing at this stuff. And I'm like, now as an adult, I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> like, I can't laugh at that. That's not funny. <laughs> like, can anybody hear me laughing? <laughs> like, right. Yeah, no, nah, it, it's and, and, and like a, a lot of a lot of what really gets me about like going back and revisiting South Park is like it, it, it's just all like centrist, like I'm more important than you because I don't believe in nothing bullshit. And it's just like, yeah, that's just like so high school, like yeah. fucking it, it's 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 not it's not cool to be so disaffected by everything. And yeah. also, yeah, like you said, a lot of that shit's just like 
just OD. It's just not funny. Yeah, because like think, so, some of it is though. Cause, no, because I think for me, I think for me, the things that I find funny are the things that are nostalgic about the things that I remember. Yeah, like the like the um the episode about like the homeless people like showing up in South Park. Right. And it's like they were showing up because like one person gave somebody twenty, like gave a, a homeless man a twenty dollar bill. So all of them just showed up and they basically had took over the city. Right. And right, so right. there's this scene at the end where they're going to save everybody and they like trick out this uh school bus and they like add this uh this speaker to it and they play like um California Love and they sing this version. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I remember it's exactly cool what to the homeless. Like that yeah. shit is that shit's hilarious. Yeah. It's like it's like that shit's hella funny. But a lot of that stuff is like uh no, like mm, this didn't this didn't age well, and it now I see why people were fucking outraged. Like, right, and there um and before we move on, there's one there's one thing I think about a lot. Um, it's, it's um, it it was an episode called "It Hits the Fan," where like everybody's making a big deal about this TV show where like someone's about to say shit on the air for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. And like, everyone's just like super duper like scared and they don't know how it's going to go. Cause everyone's like, Oh, is the show going to get canceled or censored or whatever? And then it happens. And then everyone starts using the word shit and people just like get tired of it. And, it, and, 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 and like, I'm sure you remember like at that time, like shit was like the second worst thing you could say yeah. ever, yeah. you know, like it, it, it was like right below fuck. And now like shit is just like such an accepted word mm-hmm. in a lot of ways and like i'm thinking like man they were like really onto something with that yeah. one like that like like that one they hit it right on the fucking head mm-hmm. like it, it, it it's it kind of like but but other than that i'm i i could i could i i don't i don't i don't even think i need to go back and like revisit most of it except for the warcraft episode that one that one i'll run back forever i haven't seen that one the, the warcraft episode was the, great the, fut- the future episode was um i like there's there's like certain ones that i'm like i just remember being so ingrained like because i'm like oh i thought that was like funny or clever yeah. but like a lot of that shit i don't i do not remember like <laughs> i don't like there was episodes that i'm like uh i don't remember this like skip like i, I kind of just go to the ones that like like I remember, um, like vividly watching as a kid. Right. Yeah. No. Nah, me too. At this point. Like. Yeah. It, it's, it's. Yeah. We could leave a lot of South Park behind. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And they. It's, they're still making episodes. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Now they signed like a nine hundred million dollar deal. Like. Like. Yeah. I, I think they're about to do like a bunch more seasons, and I think like ten movies or something. They. 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 They, they paid them almost a billion for more South Park. So somebody wants it, but. <laughs> A billion? A billion. Nine hundred million dollars, I swear. Look it up. <laughs> Y'all can't see her face right now, but yeah, she's like real confused. <laughs> and see, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all got nine billion dollars for that type of content, but we can't like end world hunger and homelessness. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> that's the type of shit that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like Okay. Nah, I feel it. But um, uh, before we get too off track, um, that's at, that's you on movies and TV. Um, real quick, I just want to touch on your your um your early days with music. Like, when did I mean? Like, I feel like music's been a part of your life forever. But mm-hmm. like, when did when did music become capital M music for you? Like, um, like when did I start making music, or when was it like music is like that one a big deal? That one. Uh, very early on, like. I always talk about the story about hearing Parliament in the back of my dad's car for the mm-hmm. first time. Um, gospel. I was, I've been in church since I was a kid. So like gospel music, like hearing it in church has always been like, even if I didn't understand what like catching the Holy Ghost was or whatever, it's like, no, when you hear certain chords and shit, like that shit really does something to your soul. And mm-hmm. so I feel like very, very early on, I understood like, oh, wow, this shit is powerful. Even if, even though I didn't come from like a musical family, like a, like people that played instruments, I just right. saw the effect that music had on others. So yeah, like when I was a little kid, I just was like, damn, this shit is tight. And then uh, kind of scavenging through my brother's stuff since he's like way older than me, and like finding like like the Chronic and like. Mm-hmm. You know, just all that stuff that I wasn't supposed to be listening to. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool. And then that's when it kind of turned into like, oh, I'm going to like write raps at like eight or nine years old. I was like writing raps. Um, 
with no music or anything. I was just like writing it for my friends. And um, so, yeah, I feel like just as a, as a kid, it's just always been around and it's always been very like important. Right. And yeah, you know, like you coming, you, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, like you coming from, you coming from Arkansas, like that's like right in the, you know, like that's like, it's not like right in the middle of the country, but it's in like a really, you know, like Arkansas and Missouri are really interesting in that way because like y'all are like close to the South, but also kind of like Midwest, but also so kind of so like. they call it, they call it, some people like to call it the Mid-South. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's basically the perfect, like you say, like it's Midwest and the South that kind of like meet each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that, that kind of informs the kind of music that you get, like, I'm getting stuff from like Atlanta and Memphis is two hours away. And right. Like, uh, like Louisiana, Texas and all these places have very like, d- like defined sounds. And so um, I just feel like I just heard so many things that I was like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. And I feel like that's kind of where I'm coming from on this album is that like I'm kind of mushing all of these things and then also adding like gospel and like funk yeah. and like um yeah, just all these different elements that I feel like influenced me, like being a kid from like the mid south. Because most people don't even know what the fuck Arkansas is on the map. Right. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's by Montana. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> you know where either of those are, like. <laughs> no, nah, it's not. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Because not like even just looking over the track list last night and like listening to the album, it's just like, you know, you got. Well, well, actually, no. First and foremost, hearing Gangsta Boo on here really destroyed me because I because like because like there were no there were no artist features the only people I knew who were on here were Devin the Dude and Big Crit and Jazz Cartier Mm -hmm. but so it's like I heard Boo's voice and like I was like dead ass I was folding laundry and I almost started crying like because nah yeah nah Gangsta Boo was I'm like like I'm assuming y'all I mean obviously you did that before she passed Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know like it's it, it was but just like, but just even taking like, cause you know, um, you got, you got Boo from Memphis, mm-hmm. um, Devin the dude is from Texas, Houston. Mm-hmm. Houston. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I, I I always I always forget. But but you know, you got you got Boo from Tennessee. You got um, you got Devin from Houston. You got uh, Jazz Cartier from Canada. Yeah. You got Crit from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. You know, like so, like just like to have. Like, you know, like, even before we get to, like, you as an artist, like, yeah. you're, just re- you're really just pulling from all these different traditions. And, you know, like, one of the things I love about your music is that, like, you pull from not even just, like, the Midwest and the South, but, like, I even hear a little bit of California and New York in there, too. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's, it's, it's just, like, it's just all these different sounds and they come together to just, like, inform you. Thank you know, you. like, you're, like, you know, like, you're, like, a rapper, singer, songwriter, and it just, it's just all there. You, you know, yeah, no, you're welcome. You know, like you, you, you know, like you and Smino really, really hit those, hit those, uh, hit those notes and scratch that itch for me because, like, Smino being from, um, uh, Smino being from Missouri also kind of mm-hmm. has like a similar story where mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, and like Little Rock and St. Louis are like five right. hours from each other, so exactly, yeah, you know, and it, yeah, and you, and you know, like people like Nelly coming from out there too, mm-hmm. just like, and, and, and like everything Nelly was able to do and like all the traditions he pulled from. So, I guess just like, you know, like you coming up with the music you came up with. Like, when did you I'm trying to think of how I want to ask this question? Like, do you remember the time when you went from taking in all the music that inspired you and when you started making it being like, oh, like, this is what I sound like. Like, this is this is me from all these different parts. Like, you mean, like, from the first song that I made or just in like. Just in general. Um, I think that. I started making my own music, like recording my own music when I was like 15 or 16. Yeah. Um, and I hated my voice at first. So I wouldn't even listen to my music back when I first like made it. And then it wasn't until like I got used to like hearing myself and then that kind of being like, all right, so how do I use? That's when I started to understand that my voice is an instrument. And like I had to like literally learn how to use it to make it sound like something people want to hear. <laughs> and then I think after I did that, I started, that's when I started to like kind of like really look to the people that like kind of influenced me. Like, like I have this song, I don't even, it might still be on the internet and I hope y'all don't go look it up, but <laughs> I know you will. Um, There's a song <laughs> that I have that's, uh, it was, it was like, it's like a, a Le Chat sample. Now, mind you, she can't sue me because I didn't sell this song. It was just, it's just out in the, on the internet. So right. I'm not making no money from it. I won't tell. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I like, I like sampled a Le Chat song 
and like turned it into like a, like an like kind of a electro dance kind of thing and so for me it's always been like even if people can't easily identify what the influences are like right off the bat they're there you know they yeah. it might be under some like sounds that like the average like rap like southern rap you know listener they're not used to hearing you know what i mean and i think that like like when i heard like speaker box love below that album really like that's the album that i heard that made me want to make music mm. like that's the one that, that was just like wait i can i can like do all this stuff and still be a rapper like and so i think from that moment on i always was just like okay how can we like do something that i've never heard before or like how can we just keep pushing this um in a direction that like i don't think anybody else has went in and i think that um i think that album did that for me and i want to do that for like people that listen to me that are like wanting to be like that want to be inspired to like do something different and make music right oh man you're you're, you're really preaching to the choir right now i remember i remember when my dad brought home speaker box of love below because he was because he was a pretty big outcast fan too so like he went out and grabbed the double disc and just like just like the fact that a song like Bowtie Pimp and a song like um oh I'm already I'm already forgetting the Andre song I wanted to reference. Um the one with oh she lives in my lap. Like oh the fact the, the fact that those two songs could exist, like they're obviously not on the same album, yeah, but like yeah. in the same space. Yeah. And like just the fact that those two things could exist in the same space really just like and okay, I gotta ask, how do you feel about Idlewild? You seen Idlewild? Yeah. It's, it's it, it might be like one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah, no, that shit, like that movie so fucking good. <sighs> hearing, hearing, hearing those songs in the movie, like mm-hmm. hearing she, hearing the um, um the slowed down um 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 the on the, um, the chopped up version of She Lives in My Lap when he's setting Paula Patton up for the funeral. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, that that shit destroys me every yeah. time. And he and, and seeing him do bow tie pimp at the um at church and everybody mm-hmm. dancing like like no, yeah whenever whenever that's that's I, I just loved how like. <laughs> I don't know just that whole entire movie like from the aesthetic to like the choreography like the lyrics yeah like telling the story within the like i don't know that that is one of the best that's one of the i'm sorry that is one of the best movies ever Ugh, like you know like i'm not even because because like i because like i didn't think about this until a couple of years ago but it's technically a jukebox musical because it's all based off of it or, or it's, it's it's not all old outcast songs just some new ones mm-hmm. but like it's mostly old outcast songs so like mm-hmm. it's a jukebox musical and like i don't really like those usually yeah but like i don't really like musicals i I I grew up I, I grew up liking musicals. I, I don't like them as much anymore, but like yeah. that's like like to me that's my favorite. If I had to pick a favorite musical, that's mm-hmm. my favorite musical. Yeah, like hands easy. Down. And it's crazy because <laughs> I wouldn't even think about that as a musical. And mm-hmm. It is. It just flows, you know. Yeah, like you, you don't yeah. think about it until years Cause later. It, cause because it's not like usually for musicals with me, it's like somebody's in the middle of a conversation and then they just bust out in the song. Right. And you're like what the fuck? <laughs> like what the fuck? And so I think I think because like you said, it flows so well that you don't really. You don't really realize that they're in mid, like they're in song mid until like midway through, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Like this is like this is great, right? And you want to hear Outkast, so it's like they're not making cheesy music, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah and yeah, I don't want to dwell too long, but I know, um, I know a lot of people don't like. I think people, were, I think people were cruel to the Idlewild album because, yeah. and I get it because it's the last Outkast album. Like yeah. I get it, but some joints on that fucking album yeah, like it's a lot of them because wasn't hollywood hollywood divorces hollywood divorces on, on there that album. like i don't want blues on there fucking I greatest mean, show on earth is on there yeah. like I, and i fuck, i love hollywood divorces <sighs> sorry. Now, i haven't heard that song in a long time i'm gonna go listen to it Cr- chronometrophobia is on there and i love that oh, I, yeah, I, I, I don't the, know the man. scene the scene where he had all the clocks yeah mm-hmm. that shit was fire the version on the album is better than the version in the movie in my opinion but okay. they, they're, they're like a little different but mm-hmm. either way like it, I, I don't know like I, I could i could talk about out of wild all day that's yeah. that's <laughs> that movie's fucking amazing um so before we move on to the album proper and a couple other a couple other questions um um, so like, so, so like coming up with like this relationship with rap movies and TV that you had, um, was there ever a period of time? Well, I mean, I guess we kind of, this is a great segue. Was, was there ever a time when you like actively realized that music and film were like two things that could complement one another? Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, what's funny. I feel like that that's something that I've always like, like subconsciously understood, but I think now like 
So I'm in a relationship with Felix. He is an amazing producer. Shout out to Felix. Aurora, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. And I, I don't think it was until we got in a relationship and being so close to him that I really, I really, <laughs> I hear things that I usually would not pay attention to. And it's because of him. So there'll be something in a scene where it's like, <laughs> I, I, damn, what were we watching? We were watching something the other day and it was like this super dramatic ass, like, like, you know, like, dun, 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 like something like that, but, but nothing in the scene warranted that. And so I think, um, I think, I think it's like things like that, that make me go like, okay, wait, why did they put like, why, why did they put that thing there? Like, why, like, mm -hmm. how does that make, why, why should I feel scared because this person just like. It's casually walking down the street or whatever the case may be and right. so i think that like now i'm really starting to understand like how much um the music plays a part in making you feel what you feel about what you're seeing i don't know if that makes sense no it totally does like it makes it makes a huge it could it could like it could like deter you from feeling something that you were supposed to feel when you see something or it could like get you closer to the feeling i don't know i don't, I don't know how to explain it i don't know how to explain it no, no, no. I, I, I hear what you're, I hear what you're saying because like, because like music does play such a huge role in like the way we, like, like the way a scene is supposed to, is supposed to make you feel, you mm -hmm. know, like if there's like a swelling, you know, you know, like if somebody like opens a letter and there's like a, and there's like a, there's like horns and shit playing, like that's like supposed to make it be like, oh, look, they got something cool. Yeah. But if it's like swelling violins and it, you know, it, it's it, going to be sad. Right. Yeah. You know, like it, 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 you know, like it definitely telegraphs like how you're supposed to, it, it kind of like guides your emotions mm -hmm. through. And, 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 and like, I realized that because like you go back, like go back and watch your favorite movie with like no sound, you mm. know, and like. And like, you know, like you'll probably be able to pinpoint where you're supposed to feel, how you're supposed to feel because you've seen the movie and you know it well enough. Yeah. But like if you watch a movie and if you watch a movie or a TV show and you can't hear nothing or like you like somehow have managed to find a version that doesn't have a score attached, mm -hmm. like you're going to feel differently about what you're watching. Or at least it's going to be like, you know, like outside of like the actor's performances, it might be harder to like determine like, oh, like this is supposed to make me feel happy. This yeah. is supposed to make me feel sad. You know, like yeah. you, 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 know, you look at a movie like uh, it's come up a bunch on here, but like No Country for Old Men doesn't have a score. Oh, you wow. know, like I, I never realized that. me either until one of my homies pointed it out. Like that movie doesn't have a score. So like it kind of just adds to the sense of anxiety and tension that just comes from everything happening in no country, yeah. you know, but you look at a movie like Idlewild, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, you, you know, like the music is the music is almost as important to that movie as the movie itself. Like yeah. Idlewild doesn't work as well without, without the, the music. Songs, yeah. Exactly. No, for sure. So, like, also, have you seen, um, I just watched this the other day, uh, Babylon? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, I did. The, the one about the, like how the industry changed, like where it's basically like it goes from like silent movies to like yeah and so i think even just you saying that that made me think about that movie where it's like when you're when you have the silent movies everything is about how much you can act and like play up something to make people understand what's going on yeah and then it's like when the industry changed and then it came it became about like what you sound like and like what does the score sound like um it just it basically like wiped out all these like stars that were like a big deal during the silent time mm -hmm. so yeah Damn, I wish I I wish I liked Babylon more. I <laughs> I I, re I really didn't fuck with that movie. Why? So okay, talk about it. Okay, I'm trying. To, uh, it's it's been a while since I've seen it, mm -hmm. but um, there was too much going on at one. Time. <laughs> there was too much going on at one time. <laughs> there were a couple characters I really didn't like. Um, I just don't. I I just don't like the guy who made the movie, Damien Chazelle. He's mm -hmm. made on um, Whiplash and La La Land. I just. Hey, it was just funny. I haven't seen La La Land. <sighs> I, I just I, I, I have no I, I had no desire I, I yeah like I, I just you're not missing anything like I, I I don't like his style I don't like his perspective like he's just he's just kind of like a hack to me and like watch it and just like that that's that's a bit much sorry but like <laughs> so sorry if you're listening bro but like I just I just I, like but like I just can't remember the last time I walked out of a movie and was like I hated this yeah you know like it because like because like, there's like really good performances in it it's just like, 
I really just wish they focused on like two or three of the stories they were trying yeah, to tell. Yeah, because it was a lot of storylines going on. You know, like it, it was it was just like way too much. Like if we just focused on 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 bro who made it in who made it into the industry and mm-hmm. met Margot Robbie and they had this whirlwind romance, not really whatever the fuck so they got funny, going on. I thought I thought Margot Robbie was gonna end up with fucking um Brad Pitt. I, for Me whatever, too. I honestly, thought that was gonna happen. And then like honestly, I would have loved to see more about the trumpet player. Yeah, like, me too. I, see, that's what like, I'm talking that, about. Like, like when he when he had to put the charcoal on his face to like to not be like lighter than everybody else, I was like, damn! I didn't even know that that was I didn't know that like black people had to also do blackface. Oh yeah, during those times, and so I was like, oh wait, like I want to know more about that. Like, right? You know, because like it was just kind of like, oh, it didn't work out. He left and he just went back to playing trumpet somewhere i'm like okay he's like it's like oh yeah and then he it, you know like they do like the montage at the end of the movie where it's like and then he went on to do that and like you could just show me that yeah as mm-hmm. opposed to being like oh this is what like yeah because like, you, you know, like they, they spend too much time focusing on like because like brad pitt's supposed to be like george reeve the guy who plays superman and then mm-hmm. killed himself and his or, or may or may not have killed himself it's, it's a whole story mm-hmm. um you know like you know, like i like like i knew a lot of the I knew a lot of the touchstones they were trying to hit because I'm a I'm I'm a film history dude. So like, mm-hmm. so like I just like I really wish they they had just focused on two or three of the main stories as opposed to ha- there being like eighteen at one time. And, yeah. and the movie didn't need to be fucking three hours long. Yeah, but I like, think that's but I think that's how you keep from having to like actually tell a story for real. Like if you have a bunch, you get what I'm saying? I do. Like it's yeah. like you have a bunch of people you're talking about. It's like all right, I'm gonna give you the gist of this. The gist of this, the gist of this, and we're just gonna all just put it together and be like, "All right, cool, it's a movie." Like, yeah. uh, it, that that's not good. Like, <laughs> even just like, even just like, like you said, uh, Brad Pitt's character, like he had so many wives. I would have loved to know more about like those relationships. It was just like, yeah, he had a wife in this scene, and then they got a divorce, and then he had a wife in this scene, and then they got a divorce, and it's just like, okay, like yeah. he had like ten wives in in the whole three hours. I'm like. Yeah, I I just like it, they they just they just needed to like focus more, and if they focused more, it might have been better. But yeah. I'm gonna try it again because I've had people tell me like, oh yeah, you know you know you tripping, you gotta watch it. And I'll, I'll try it again. I just but. thought I just thought it was <laughs> I just thought it was a good like a good because I, like I said, I'm not like a film like buff, so also just to see like okay, people were, were watching movies with no sound, and then for right. that to change like. I didn't know that like a person's voice could turn off an audience. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like that yeah, could like yeah. you could just love how a person look and how they act and then you hear them and you're like, "Oh no, like they're the, they're the worst actor that I've ever." You know what I mean? And so yeah. seeing that, I was like, "Oh, okay, shit, this makes me want to like one kind of like go back and watch shit that was like that was like around the time when sound first got introduced right. and like see what the difference is between like now and then." Um there was this um what is the there's like uh is it a what is, uh, i don't want to say it i don't want to say the wrong thing um it's like a mo- it's like a black movie where they had the dancers there had like went up the stairs and uh is it something mm. weather stormy weather stormy weather yeah no nah, that's one of my dad's favorite movies yeah, yeah um so i want my my niece actually came up to me and was like oh you should watch this scene these two these two twins they oh they weren't twins they were brothers and they like do the dance thing and so i was like oh wow like i need to i need to like go back and like watch like those black movies from back then where um because like one of my favorite movies is uh like carmen jones we watched that me and my family watch that movie every year i love carmen jones i love carmen jones and the thing is how i even knew about i watched because i had a Carmen the hip hopper. Of course, yeah. On come on, come on, and come so on. Then, um, I forgot who told me. They were like, "Oh, have you ever seen Carmen Jones?" And I was like, "No." And then I went back and watched. It. I was like, "Oh my god, this shit is so good." Gas. I'm not gonna so lie. Kind of made the hip hopper look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, but no, but Carmen Jones is is really good. Yeah, no, nah, Carmen Jones is incredible. I, I don't know that I talked about it too much, and I don't want to dwell too long. But like, it's just like. Oh, uh, like, like I think my dad. Um, I'm, I mean, like, um, my dad just turned seventy eight, so he's been, you know, like he was born in the forties. Mm-hmm. He was born in forty five, so he has a lot of he he has a lot of uh, he has a lot of relationships with that with those older movies, and mm-hmm. like, like he's been putting me and my sister on for years, and like whenever we're together for the holidays, like we always watch Carmen Jones, like yeah. every year. And it's like, a good movie to watch. Like yeah. you can watch it a bunch of times, and like 
not get tired of it. Yeah, it's and so good. even though the ending is so sad, you know, yeah. like it, it, you know, like her getting choked out in the yeah. back room is just like so yeah. much. But it's but it's, there's this one scene that I love when when uh, she's painting her toenails and she like extends her leg out to yeah. Harry Belafonte and he's like and he's kissing her. her foot. That's such a good picture. So good. That's such a good. I yeah. Was like, oh man, this is good. Classic man. Oh man, now now I want to watch Carmen Jones this week. <laughs> Damn. Um. So, uh. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um, because it's been on my mind, and because it's almost it's 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 about to turn ten years old. I've been thinking a lot about no small talk recently, yeah. and you know, like since we're you, yeah. like yeah, like it, it's 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 like crazy to think because like to me, like that was my first introduction to you, mm-hmm. or the earliest one I could remember. You know, like it, and, and and you're like just just like just like talk to me about looking back on no small talk about like just at for like it's it's been it's been almost 10 years like what what how, how how do you how do you feel about it now versus how you felt about it then i think i still feel the same i feel like okay i feel the way i feel the way i feel about it now the way that i did when it first came out somewhere in the middle i was feeling funky about it because mm. i'm like i hate when people would be like do not small talk. Do not small talk. Like there was a time in my life where I hated that, and now I'm at. I'm like I feel like I'm so far removed from like those feelings um, because I made so much music between like between those times where people are right. asking me for other things. So I'm like, okay, I don't resent you anymore. Like no small talk. Like we can be friends again. <laughs> and so now, um, I like, I love that song. The the funny thing is like when we made it. As soon as we finished making it, I remember telling Malik, I was like, this song is a fucking hit. Like, I, that was the first time that I had made a song and I was like, this shit is gonna go. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where, but this shit is like, people are just gonna fuck with it. And it was crazy because it did. It just, it was, it was every fucking thing. Yeah. It was everywhere. And I just like, I don't know. I'm just, I have so much gratitude um, for that song. I have so much gratitude for Black Party for being there, like help me, like make the song. Um, I have gratitude for like Donald Glover for fucking remixing it. I have mm-hmm. gratitude for Issa Rae for putting it on the show. And like honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if No Small Talk had <laughs> like. Oh, also shout out to Hot New Hip Hop because they also had my mixtape on the front cover, like on the on the front page. When it first came out and like no small talk was like at the top and I was just, like like it was just so many people that like really just kinda like wrapped their arms around me and was just very like supportive from the jump. Like nobody knew me. Like literally nobody knew who I was and they were like, Okay, wait, who is this girl? And so yeah, I love I love that song. I'm gonna play it when when I leave. <laughs> yeah, no, I can you know, like I can only imagine like just like a song that just kinda takes on a life of its own in that way can just and it was like completely organic. That's the right, thing. Like yeah. nowadays everything is like everything is like, okay, you pay money to like have this thing put here and like like nothing nothing feels organic anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, and you can't and the thing is is like if something is organic, you can't really tell if it is or it isn't. Yeah. Like you don't really know. And so that was one of those things where it's like, yeah, I I just put it out in the world and it just grew legs and started running. So Right. Yeah. No, nah, it, it's it's a uh, there there aren't very many songs that feel like that anymore that don't come from like that don't come from like a very specifically like independent space, you mm-hmm. know, or like stuff that kind of feels grassroots and DIY. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of that shit happening here in like New York and in the tri-state in general. Mm-hmm. But like, it's like you said, it's so difficult to tell. And, you know, like one thing about you is that, you know, like you've been independent like this whole time, mm-hmm. which is like, a which is incredibly difficult to maintain, like for one. Yeah. And for two, you know, difficult. like I can only I, I, you know, I can only imagine. <laughs> like, very, but, <laughs> cool. but, you know, but, you know, like you, you know, like you kind of, you know, you, you know, you kind of stuck to your guns and and kept it up through all these different projects that you put out like including the two different versions of like low-key superstar and cry for help i'm I'm not going to sit here and list all your titles but Mm -hmm. like you know like you've kind of you kind of you kind of bet on yourself in a way that's very difficult to do now you know like without like the proper support behind you yeah and you know like also since you, you know like since we're since we're on the cusp of your new album like you know, like being independent and moving the way you've moved, like, 
you know, especially considering that things aren't as organic as they used to be, mm -hmm. or, or at least it's more difficult for them to be. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, you know, like looking back on the way you kind of came up as an independent artist, like, you know, I guess elaborate a little more on how you feel about what it means to be independent in 2023 versus in 2014 you know uh, like, oh man uh i feel like i don't i feel like i feel like it's kind of, it, it might be i mean the thing is it's like it's weird because i feel like it's it's easier than it was back then to be independent now um just because like i mean essentially there's no there's like not a lot of gatekeeping happening have used to be like during like the blog era like there was like right. you had to impress like a certain group of people to get on a blog or to get anybody to kind of like talk about you um but i don't know i feel like i feel like now i mean even now i'm i'm like still independent but i'm with like an independent label and this this is right. like the first time that i've like signed with a label every every other thing has been like distribution so there's like no label like you know um services or anything they're just basically like putting the music out right and then i'm being the one that's being like hey like look at me i'm doing these things um so i think this will be the first time that i have like that like label support even though it is still like independent like i'm still having to like come up with like my own everything right um from the music to like the video treatments to like like i'm still calling the shots and so i think now like as an adult like as, as a 30 almost one year old um like i need support right like, it's like i've been taking bets on myself this entire time i've been taking risks and i still do but it has to be smart risks it can't just be like you know kind of like oh fuck everybody i'm gonna do what i want it has to be more more of a calculated risk right and so um i think now like with the like with the support of the label um they're a new label as well and so it's they they don't feel they don't feel like they're kind of like like when i made the album they didn't they didn't tell me like what i should and shouldn't make they didn't tell me like oh you should do this you should do like they literally let me make the album and i turned it in they were like oh my god this is fucking amazing you know what <laughs> i mean and i like that i like the fact that they were like very much hands off they didn't like you know um come between me and the music and like my process um so yeah i just think that now i'm like trying to like be smart about how i move but still being able to maintain like the creative control of everything right yeah. And, you know, like I can tell I can tell that you really put so much of yourself into like the way not even just the way the music sounds, but like the way it's presented. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to hear all of this about distro, because like I feel like in like the early 2000s, like everybody, you, you, know, you know, like everybody wanted distro deals and then it kind of like moved away from that. And mm -hmm. now we're kind of moving back to distro deals mm -hmm. again. And, then you know, like, it's just crazy how everything moves in cycles you yeah, know like yeah. it, it's it's really interesting how that works i'm working I'm, um, I'm i'm working on this big piece that'll be out by the time this comes out so i can say it's a piece on backwood studios go check it out i loved it <laughs> um but like but like i've been talking with them about how they've because like they've been in the game for 20 years and they've also been working through distro shit mm -hmm. so it's just interesting to see that everyone's kind of back on that train right now where yeah. it's like yeah. you know like you're you know like you're the draw but they're the they're the they're the people who shoot it out type yeah, shit. yeah yeah and, and like cool. and and that's really like necessary because i have had times where i've i've done like self-releases where i've like uploaded my own music and like yeah had to get all the irsc codes or whatever it's called um <laughs> like doing all that like all the back end stuff which is like at the time i didn't mind doing it because i didn't have you know what i mean like i didn't have the help to do it so i'm one of those people that's like if, I, if nobody's gonna help me i'm just do it myself and so i didn't really complain about it i'm just like I want to get this music out. Actually, I put it, I self-released Low-Key Superstar. Yeah. And so it was like one of those things where I'm like, I just want to get this music out to people. I want people to hear it. I'm not going to complain about not having help. I'm just going to do the thing. Right. And so now I'm like, okay, well, there are people like, like the label Drink Some Water, who was ran by Nigel Mack. Um, yep. Shout out. Shout out to Nigel. <laughs> um, he actually, we've been like friends for years. Um, and he just hit me up and was like, hey, like I'm starting a label. Like, you know, I really fuck with your music. I fuck with you. Like, like, let's have a conversation. And that's and so for me, it's like, you know, Nigel. If you know Nigel, like, he's a really like great guy. Oh, do you know Nigel? Not super well, but like well enough to yeah, know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the legend of Nigel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like he's he's a great guy. Um, 
and he you know he like i said he just let me do my thing he just was completely like yeah go like and so um i think that that's the best way that you can get what you know like what you're hoping for out of an art out of an artist that you're investing in and so um it's just like i have the help now and i feel like i'm making the best music yeah and so you know hopefully this time <laughs> <laughs> this shit will ring off and you know um the frequencies will hit outer space the aliens will come down and save us off hey nah man yeah 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 nah yeah nah they're gonna they're, they're, they're gonna hear all the bass that's on this project they're gonna hear they're, 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 yeah now nah, they're gonna hear all those riffs and licks and be like nah what the fuck is that shit like <laughs> i might be the reason yeah. why the alien invasion hey happened. nah you heard it here first <laughs> and that's so funny before um, um um before we get to my last question yeah um drink some water help put out my homie dean spencer's album yeah um, shout out to dean i'm actually gonna go see him tonight at elsewhere i'll be there too they, crazy all there. right cool yeah 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 no nah. so, so, so yeah like i know i know i know i know they're all they're they're all real good people over there and like mm -hmm. deem is somebody and, and, and like deem's been the homie for years like mm -hmm. i've seen him perform like in like hole in the walls in brooklyn you know like so like to see him at this point now and like to see to see both of y'all at this point now you know is like really really beautiful yeah um so a congrats Thank you. and b um well, before we officially wrap this up carrie foe if your life was a movie what would it be about Oh man, um, uh, it would be about. I don't. I feel like my movie. I, my movie would be Kill Bill. Okay, but who are you trying to kill? <laughs> um, I think I'm just trying to like kill the like the industry standard. You know, mm -hmm. like say like say like. Bill is like okay, you know, like undercover brother, like the man. Oh yeah, like that, like that type <laughs> of shit. Where it's like the man, like the, mm -hmm. the 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 ominous, like shapeless, formless yeah, thing yeah. that they're like no, like it's like everybody believes in it, but we don't know why because you can't really fucking see. It. Yeah, he had no face but white hair and a suit. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So yeah. it's like to me that would be like the industry standard where it's like okay, I'm going after this thing and I want to like completely like I want to just obliterate that and be completely myself and not have to like have like what people i don't know just like this because especially like with now with female rap i feel like there's so many like cool girls coming out and the industry is trying to form them like shape them and mold them into this one thing yeah and, and so, pit them against each other on top of that exactly like. <laughs> exactly and i think for me i'm seeing that and i'm like i don't i don't want to do that like i just want to be myself make the music and like show up and do the thing and say fuck everybody like who doesn't think that I can do that and still right. not like not conform so and not and not spill your orange soda while you're driving in your fucking vintage vintage car because you know period yeah like <laughs> that part damn I was just talking to my sister about Undercover Brother another one of my favorite yeah. movies ever we yeah. we used to we used to watch that over the summer like it would just come on TV and we would just watch it six times like, yeah I I think we watched that I, I think I made Felix watch that like a month ago damn how'd he like it. He loves it. Mm. He loves it. Oh, this shit's incredible. Like, <laughs> damn, Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you. Like, th th this was this was this was so dope, and for this to be like the first thing we're doing live, and just like I don't know, I just like I just appreciate you coming to me for this because yeah. I, I I I mean like I don't know, like I'm 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 just I'm just a nigga, bro. Like I don't know, like <laughs> no, when they told me, I was like, oh yeah, I know Dylan, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> No, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna send you a list of movies you need to watch. Yes, uh, please. No, nah, I I'm, not... look. I'm about to get film buff. Okay? Uh... <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing with my arms, but I'm doing the buff. No, nah, we can make it happen. We can totally make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far, and shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.